The last lesson in the book of Exodus is no anticlimax. This is the moment the Lord has been waiting for. He has been withdrawn from the people on Sinai's peak with a barrier keeping the people from coming near. But the tabernacle is ready for occupancy. Each thing is in its place, situated according to its relationship to the divine focal point, the Ark of the Testimony. The Ark, that beautiful picture of Christ, the meeting place between God and man, determined the location of every tent peg in the whole encampment. Just so today, everything and everyone is evaluated by their distance from or nearness to the nail-pierced feet of the Lord Jesus. From the promise to crush the serpent under his heel, Genesis 3.15, to the moment when his enemies are made his footstool, Psalm 110.1, the history of the world climaxes when every knee bows and all confess that he is Lord. Philippians 2, 10 and 11. As we by faith behold the whole scene, the lessons should be obvious. The singularity of Christ, the only way to God, seen in the gate. The sufficiency of the Savior's blood, illustrated by the great altar. The necessity of cleansing for us to serve him, betrayed by the laver. The community of fellowship, illustrated in the showbread, the privilege of testimony pictured in the lampstand, the wonder of accessibility through prayer displayed by the incense from the golden altar, and the centrality of worship before the mercy seat. What a glorious feast for our hearts and souls every time we visit our Abba in the holiest. So let's come often. But see what happens now. Quote, so Moses finished the work, then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Exodus 40, verses 33 and 34. Immediately we read, Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, verse 35. But here's the amazing thing. We're able to. Here is the glorious invitation. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hebrews 10 verses 19 to 22. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Chapter four, verse 16. What were the benefits of having the glory cloud? First, it provided connection, revealing God's presence in his people's midst. For, quote, the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Second, it gave instruction about when to move or stay. Quote, whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not journey. Verses 36 and 37. Third, it provided protection day and night. The cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day and fire was over it by night. Verse 38. Even a night light for the children. It also gave direction as Israel journeyed through all that howling wilderness. He encircled them. He instructed them. He kept them as the apple of his eye. Deuteronomy 32, 10. If only we had such a presence in our journey home. But, but wait, of course we do. 
Quote, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews 13, verses five and six. 